Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. In this chapter, we will continue talking about the factors of production. This slide establishes the relationship between the marginal cost and the marginal production. So, remember that the marginal cost, MC, is the cost of producing an additional unit of output. It equals delta Tc divided by delta Q, where Tc is the total cost. Now, suppose that the wage equals $2,500 and that the NPL equals 500 bushels. If farmer Jack hires another worker, delta Tc will be $2,500. Delta Q will equal 500 bushels. So the marginal cost will be $5 per unit. In general, the marginal cost equals the wages divided by the MPL. Now, let's see the connection between input demand and output supply. Notice that to produce additional output, we must hire more labor. And as L rises, MPL falls, causing W divided by MPL to rise, causing the marginal cost to rise. Now, hence, diminishing marginal product and increasing marginal cost are two sides of the same coin. This slide shows that when a competitive firm hires labor to the point where W equals VMPL, it is also producing output up to the point where the price equals the marginal cost. This is the competitive firm's rule for supplying output. Hence, input demand and output supply are two sides of the same coin. Let's talk about the labor supply. Indeed, trade-off between work and leisure. The more time you spend working, the less time you have for leisure. Here, the opportunity cost of leisure is the wage. At this point, we briefly discuss the income and substitution effects we concede. So, the possibility that the labor supply curve might be backward if the income effect exceeds the substitution effect, but states that we will ignore the possibility for now and assume the labor supply curve is positively sloped. Let's see now the things that shift the labor supply curve. First point is related to changes in tastes uh, or attitudes regarding the labor leisure trade off. Regarding this point, economists confirm that a change in attitudes about female labor force participation over the past 50 years has dramatically shifted the labor supply curve rightward. The second point is related to the opportunities for workers in other labor markets. And we have also another point related to immigration. What about the equilibrium in the labor market? The wage adjusts to balance supply and demand for labor. The wage always equals VMPL. Now let's talk about changes in labor market equilibrium. And let's have an exercise. In each of the following scenarios, use a diagram of the market for domestic auto workers to find the effect on their wage and employment. Scenario A, baby boomers who worked in the auto industry retire. Scenario B, car buyers preferences shift toward imported autos. Scenario C, technological progress boosts productivity in the auto manufacturing industry. These are the answers. In fact, the retirement of baby boomer auto workers shifts supply leftward. W rises, L falls. Then, a fall in the demand for the US autos reduces P. At each L, VMPL falls, and the labor demand curve shifts down. So, by the end, we have W and L that will both fall. Finally, at each L, MPL rises due to technological progress. 
VMPL rises and the labor demand curve shifts upward. W and L increase. Let's talk about the productivity and wage growth in the US. One of the economic principles state the follows. A country's standard of living depends on its ability to produce goods and services. Our theory implies wages tied to labor productivity, W equals VMPL. Let's see the data. So the data on this slide and the analysis on the preceding one shows that technological progress benefits workers by increasing real wages. Unfortunately, technological progress makes some job obsolete. For example, the demand for typewriter repair technicians has fallen sharply over the past 25 years. Eludit is someone who opposes technological progress. Eludit have argued in the 1980s that policymakers should restrict the spread of computers and word processing software to protect the jobs of typewriter repair technicians. Most students will readily agree that such a policy would have been a huge mistake. The productivity gains from computers and word processing software far outweighed the welfare losses of workers displaced from the typewriter repair industry. Moreover, this change has created other kinds of jobs, such as the technicians who charge $100 per hour to recover your data from Windows crashes, spyware and virus attacks. Let's see the other factors of uh, production. We have seen how workers are compensated. What determines how much the owners of land and capital earn for their contribution to the production pro process? First, we distinguish between the purchase price and rental price. of these factors. So the purchase price is the price a person pays to own that factor indefinitely. And the rental price is the price a person pays to use that factor for a limited period of time. Then we apply the lessons we learned about wages determination to help us understand the determination of the rental prices of the capital and land. Now let's see how the rental price of land is determined. Indeed, firms decide how much land to rent by comparing the price with the value of the marginal product of the land. The rental price of land adjusts to balance supply and demand for the land. Now what about the capital price? Indeed. Firms decide how much capital to rent by comparing the price with the value of the marginal product VMP of capital. The rental price of capital adjusts to balance supply and demand for capital. Now let's talk about the rental and purchase prices. Indeed, buying a unit of capital or land yields a stream of rental income. When a firm buys a unit of capital, it will likely use that capital in its own production rather than rent it in the capital rental market. However, the opportunity cost of using its capital is the stream of rental income it could earn. So if the firm is using its own capital, we can infer that the capital is generating at least as much income as the stream of rental income it would command in the rental market. The rental income in any period equals the value of the marginal product. Hence, the equilibrium purchase price of a factor depends on both the current VMP and the VMP expected to prevail in future periods. Let's see briefly the linkages among the factors of production. Indeed, in most cases, factors of production are used together in a way that makes each factor's productivity dependent on the quantities of the other factors. For example, an increase in the quantity of capital 
Here, the marginal product and rental price of capital fall. Having more capital work makes make workers more productive. MPL and W rise. Now, let's sum up. The theory in this chapter is called the neoclassical theory of income distribution. It states that factor prices determined by supply and demand. Each factor is paid the value of its marginal product. Most economists use this theory as a starting point for understanding the distribution of income. The economy's income distribution is determined in the markets for the factors of production. The, th the three most important factors of production are labor, land, and capital. A firm's demand for a factor is derived from its supply of output. Competitive firms maximize profit by hiring each factor up to the point where the value of its marginal product equals its rental price. Eventually, the supply of labor rises from the trade-off between work and labor and yields an upward sloping labor supply curve. The price paid to each factor adjusts to balance supply and demand for that factor. In equilibrium, each factor is compensated according to its marginal contribution to production. Factors of production are used together. A change in the quantity of one factor affects the marginal products and equilibrium earnings of all factors. So this is the end of this chapter. Thank you very much.